guess as, as more people eschew traditional entertainment venues like movie theaters, theme parks, and the like for the outdoors, certain stocks are well positioned for our post-pandemic reality. Here to talk about the rise of solitary leisure is Robbie Ohm, senior retail analyst at Bank of America. Robbie, it's good to have you. And I mean, bottom line, one of the picks here is uh, Yeti, right, for the coolers? That is right. Uh, you know, coolers, you find them in parks, boats, beaches. You also find their drinkware uh, all over those places as well. So, you know, solitary leisure is one of the things we're seeing in the, in the data trends, you know, heading into May. And Yeti is a really uh, great fit within those trends. One of your other main picks here is Dick's Sporting Goods. And I am curious, I mean, they've had to deal with not selling firearms, which people also, I think, has been one of the biggest uh, sellers the last couple of months. Um, so how much of a tailwind do you think Dick's has and how much of a headwind is it if uh, they don't <laughs> they don't sell uh, some of the products anyway people are looking for? You know, they, they definitely have some headwinds like uh, firearms, but I think, you know, one of the surprises is that, uh, you know, when we looked at the BAC credit card uh, and debit card data, you saw this uh, big jump heading into May in uh, things like golf and marine-related spending and, and Dick's Sporting Goods, uh, you know, is one of the largest golf retailers in the U.S. They sell fishing equipment. They're big in home fitness uh, and they're big in bicycles. Those are all categories we highlighted in the note that you saw this big kind of acceleration in spending, uh, you know, heading into May here. But, you know, if that continues, you know, that could help offset some of those headwinds for Dick's Sporting Goods. It's interesting. And these are the two names you primarily highlighted. We spoke yesterday with the CEO of Winnebago. They do a lot of boating. And he said they, they've seen huge demand there. It kind of matches anecdotally with what we've heard. Are there any other companies or, or kind of investment ideas that you would encourage people to think about? I mean, anything that's exposed to outdoor lifestyle activity, you know, again, we, we call it um, solitary leisure, for lack of a better word. But if you look at the categories that, that have upticked, it's, they're accessible uh, and they involve, you know, sort of built-in social distancing and, and things like that. And so we'll see if this trend continues, but it's, it's a very strong trend so far. I'm even thinking about, you know, people getting out to mow their lawns. I mean, tractor supply is a monster. Are valuations for you a concern with any of these names? I mean, they, all, they have rebounded nicely. You know, they have rebounded nicely. And I think the, the best answer I can give to that is, you know, if the sales momentum in these, uh, you know, solitary leisure categories offsets some of those headwinds that you brought up, you could see uh, earnings upside relative to where the consensus is. And that would uh, also result in the stocks going higher. And then you could get multiple expansion if the market decided that some of these solitary leisure activities, uh, you know, like bicycling, uh, were just going to be a short term trend. Mm, exactly. I know we're uh, we're going to the bike store in town <laughs> as soon as it opens. <laughs> uh, you know, we need just a used bike, nothing too fancy. Uh, anyway, by the time we do, they'll probably be all sold out. Robbie, thanks so much. And uh, definitely, like you said, Dix and Yeti, you think are the two big beneficiaries. But thanks for joining me today.